Welcome to Electronline. In this video and the next few videos, we're going to show you the effect of a voltmeter and a current meter in a circuit. And we're first going to start out with just a simple battery that has some internal resistance and it's not connected to anything else. And so what we're going to do here is attach a current meter right there. And of course, remember, a current meter has to be in the circuit itself. And then we attach a voltmeter, which is clamped onto the circuit from the outside across some device. In this case, it's going to be across the battery with the internal resistance. The E here stands for the EMF, the electromotive force, the voltage that the battery provides. And of course, the internal resistance will take away some of the voltage if there's a current flowing through it. And we measure the terminal voltage from one end of the battery to the other end of the battery. All right, also we're going to assume that the internal resistance of the voltmeter is 20,000 ohms. Typically, internal resistances or voltmeters are fairly high, and the modern voltmeters are probably much higher than 20,000 ohms. And then the internal resistance of current meters tend to be very low. Uh, they put a shunt resistor in there uh, that is uh, associated with the, well, of course, I'm talking about the old current meters where we still have a galvanometer in them. Again, modern current meters that are digital, of course, they're built very differently. But the principle is still the same. It'll, be, it'll have a very small internal resistance associated with the current meter. So what would the voltmeter and the current meter read here? Well, since there is no current flowing through the circuit because there's nowhere for the current to go, you then can say that the current meter will show zero current. So I equals zero at the location of the current meter. Now, is that completely true? Well, if we don't have the voltmeter attached, if we assume for a moment the voltmeter is gone, then yes, you can say there's absolutely no current. But once you attach a voltmeter, you actually provide a complete circuit, and some current will be flowing through this part of the circuit. So even though you didn't intend to measure the voltage uh, of, uh, for example, this is now will be a parallel path, and so the voltmeter will, in essence, measure the voltage of the parallel path. It's an unintended consequence of measuring the voltage. There's always going to be some small effect on the, um, on the circuit, and you'll see in a moment how that works. So first of all, what we can say is, let's calculate the current in this portion of the circuit once we connect the voltmeter on there. And of course, using Ohm's law, I equals V over R. And the voltage provided in the circuit will be the EMF which we define to be 5 volts, divided by the total resistance, which is the resistance of the voltmeter plus the internal resistance of the circuit. Now you'll see that the internal resistance of the circuit is very small. This is very large, the, the resistance of the voltmeter, so we should see a very, very small current. Let's see how that works out. 5 volts divided by 20,000 ohms plus 1 ohm. And you can see that the internal resistance in this case is insignificant. 5 volts divided by 20,000 and 1 ohm. And let's see if I brought my calculator. Yes, I did. Here it is. So 5 divided by 2001 equals, and so we have 2.5. In, in essence, it'll be 2.5 times 10 to the minus 4 amps. And of course, that would be equal to 0.0. Oop. Let me write it like this, 0.25 milliamps. So that is the current in this part of the circuit. So that means there's going to be some potential difference or voltage drop across internal resistance. So the voltage drop across internal resistance is equal to I times internal resistance. In this case, that would be 0.25 milliamps times internal resistance of 1 ohm, which is equal to 0.25 millivolts. So less than a thousand of a volt, a quarter of one one thousand of a volt, a very tiny difference. So what we can say then is that the voltmeter, in essence, the voltmeter is going to be equal to the EMF minus the voltage drop across internal resistance. And so this is going to be 5 volts minus 0.00025 volts, and this is so small, this is so insignificant, most voltmeters will not even pick that difference up. This is still going to show you uh, a 5 volt across the, uh, across the battery, across the EMF with the internal resistance. So you can see that when you have a circuit that is not connected to anything, in essence, the volt, placing the voltmeter on there will have a very small effect, but it's virtually insignificant. The current coming through that part of the circuit is very small, therefore the voltage drop across internal resistance is very small, so therefore 
you're still seeing five volts across the battery as if there's no internal resistance and as if there's no current through there. Now notice, if this had been a much smaller value, then the current would have been more significant and then you would have started seeing some voltage drop across internal resistance not in this case. So there is a simplistic case, an open circuit, that's what current meters and voltmeters do. Now we're going to connect that to a complete circuit with a load resistor and then we'll see how that will change things as far as the effect of a voltmeter and a current meter in the next video.